We're in the treasury in St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican in Rome, looking at a large marble sarcophagus. This is the tomb of Junius Bassus. This sarcophagus is especially interesting because it dates to the mid-fourth century. So we're talking about the very early centuries of Christianity. Christianity has just been made allowable to practice within the Roman Empire by the Emperor Constantine. And so we're looking at the sarcophagus of a man who lived much of his life as a pagan and then converted to Christianity. And so this is a transitional moment when the iconography that is the language of representation is just being developed for Christianity. What's interesting to me is that there is no image of the crucifixion of Christ here. This is early and that representational tradition has not yet been developed. In fact, Christ appears here enthroned at the top center, surrounded on either side by Peter and Paul, but he looks much more like a youthful Roman emperor than the image of the bearded older Christ as judge that we see later. There are reminders of this earlier pre-Christian polytheistic tradition because Christ's feet are supported by the Roman god of the sky. But clearly in his left hand, we see scrolls. So we have the idea of Christ as the lawgiver. And he and Peter and Paul are so beautifully framed by these Corinthian columns that have shafts that are carved with angelic figures that have a decidedly classical quality to them. And it does remind us that the man who commissioned this sarcophagus was wealthy. He was the prefect of the city of Rome. Only someone very wealthy could afford such a beautifully carved sarcophagus. We see five scenes on the top, five on the bottom, each one separated by these lovely columns. All the figures are so deeply carved that they remind me of other figures from the fourth century, like those, for example, that we see on the Arch of Constantine. They look generally classical. They wear togas and ancient Roman clothing, but their heads are a little big and their bodies are a little squat. These are proportions that we see in fourth century ancient Roman art. Nevertheless, these are decidedly Christian images that are drawn from both the Old and the New Testament. Directly below the central scene of Christ enthroned, you see an image that is a standard in the Christian story. This is Christ entering the city of Jerusalem. This draws on a tradition of Roman emperors entering triumphantly on horseback. But here Christ enters very humbly. Just to the left of that is the oldest scene represented. This shows Adam and Eve, both nude, separated by a tree. And if you look carefully, you can see the serpent, that symbol of evil that will tempt Adam and Eve and cause the downfall of mankind, requiring Christ in order to save mankind. And in fact, we have other scenes here from the Old Testament. We have the scene of Daniel in the lion's den and this idea that stories from the Old Testament prefigure, that is, they in some ways foreshadow the events of Christ's life. And we see that especially in the scene at the upper left where we see the sacrifice of Isaac. Abraham has been asked to sacrifice his only son by God. And this scene for Christians foreshadows God's willingness to sacrifice his only son, Jesus Christ, to redeem the sins of mankind. You can see that Abraham once held a knife. The blade has broken off. He holds Isaac Isaac by his head. You can see the altar to the lower right and the ram that will ultimately substitute for Isaac to Abraham's right. Each one of these scenes is beautifully contained within its architectural frame. Let's spend a moment with the sacrifice of Isaac and look at the way that Abraham is so beautifully rendered. He stands in a contrapposto, that is his left leg is bearing the weight of his body and you can see the right knee breaking through the fabric as he lifts his weight off that leg. And his face looks so Roman to me. The sculptor uses a small drill to carve the beard so that we have these alternations of light and dark and the sense of these lovely curls in his beard. This is a story about his absolute faith in God and God's will and that is so beautifully expressed in that resolute look on his face. So here we have a sarcophagus from Junius Bassus expressing his desire for eternal life in heaven through Christ only a few centuries after Christ's death.